Hello and welcome to Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract and in this Zim Explore we're going to take a look at the Zim Sim. So let's go to Zim at zimjs.com and have a look, shall we? Ooh, how exciting. So we can get there by pressing the cat and then it happens to be this one right here. Now this plays a tone and then we affect a single tone. This other one over here is a synth pad which can play multiple tones at the same time and have custom waveforms. So you're welcome to take a look at that. We've done bubblings on both of those as well as the wired. Wired is how we can hook up a dial or a slider to something else such as the tone that we're going to see here. All right, so you can see them there. You can also see them under examples. Right there is the Zim synth and there's the pad. Now, we can't play a sound until the user interacts, so we've just made an on button here, and that starts the synthesizer. And we've gone through the synthesizer in a bubbling, so you should go find that if you're interested to see how the synthesizer works. Uh, basically, turn this down a touch. Um, basically, what's happening is there's a frequency that the note is playing at, and there's a filter on either side of that frequency called a bandpass filter. This will say how much that goes back and forth, <laughs> as you can see. Um, this says how constricted it is. So, open, constricted. Here is the frequency of, of um, how quickly we, not move frequency, but how quickly we move the filter, the bandpass filter, back and forth. And then here is where we're starting that filter going back and forth. So that's starting up higher, so the high end is coming. And this is lower, so the low end is coming. And then this one is changing the waveform uh, that is changing <laughs> the, um, the bandpass filter. So that's a square wave. This was smooth. Neat. That's a, a saw. And this is a backward saw, which we called a zap. <laughs> Fun, huh? And here's what they sound like all together. So now we're randomizing the various tones. Whoa. <laughs> Fun, huh? Ooh, needle. Alright, let's turn that off. Oh. And boop. pausing that. Oh, thank goodness. Actually, when we were creating this, I was getting queasy. I, you know, like I work with synthesizers all the time. Well, not all the time, but I was in a space rock band and I have a Moog right behind me. And I love these sounds and I was able to recreate these sounds here using Zim Synth, uh, which is all built on the JavaScript Web Audio API. So, uh, but <laughs> it's like in the headphones, I would get queasy and now this is triggering my queasiness. <laughs> you can imagine working on this for two weeks, <laughs> what, that would, what that would do to you. I think my insides were garbled. I was being turned into an alien, I tell you. All right, by the way, we added a, a, a custom function in our app to bring that down a bit. A custom function in our app to just toggle that on and off if we wanted to, which is handy. We thought about bringing it into Zim on the dial, but mm, just thought that maybe it was a bit too custom. <laughs> However, we did customize these lovely dials and sliders, which were all part of the bubbling as well, to uh, match um, sort of this sound uh, <laughs> world. I like it where we've got these, you know, colors that uh, we call them. I can't even remember what we call them. Mm, what was that? Well, maybe we can see once we get in there. Some sort of special highlight word that we used to um, talk about this this dial thing there. Let's see it. Ooh. All right, into the code we go, shall we? In this Zim Explorer, are you excited? Well, maybe before we go into the code, how about we hit the docs? So if we hit the docs here, the synth is broken down into play and tone primarily. 
play, you can check the bubbling video and go to the or go to this little link here. It's it's a tool and uh, there's an, exp an explosion sound <laughs> and here's a blip. But you can change these blips and make them sound really cool and then these numbers down here you can save. So if you save those you can stick it into play and the synth you make a synth and then you play. Just stick the code in there and right like that. Ba -doop -ba -doop, there it is. Paste into the synth.play. You made a new synth, synth.play, and it will play that sound. So you can use that in your games, and nothing else is needed. Just, just zim and this. You don't have to bring in any sound. You can have a whole wealth of sounds. Isn't that neat? So thank you, Frank Force, for that. So that's somebody else's library, very small library that we brought in and put it here. Then we wanted to make a tone. So we were working on a tone and changing much of the same things that uh, they're changing with their, their sliders and stuff. But uh, let's, let's have a look, a quick look through the docs here on tone. So there's the play stuff with the play parameters. And then here's the tone right here with volume. And then note, we can do the shape, which is sine, square, triangle, saw, wave. Uh, the duration of the tone, and we're just staying forever. Uh, the attack is how long it takes to, to grow to this, the, the volume, and uh, release is how long it takes to fade, fade away, and then the duration is over that whole period, uh, plus any duration of just being normal, not attacking nor releasing. <laughs> so then here's a bunch of wah stuff that we provided. There is no wah on the web audio. What we had to do is use that band pass filter as mentioned, and so Wa amount, wa rate, wa shape, wa throat, wa notes. That's what the synthesizer are changing. And all those things, except for the wa shape, all those things are just numbers. So we're using the sliders and dials to change those along with the volume. Uh, the wa shape we used a selector on and we still wired that. So all those things are wired and we're going to see how we wired them. Wired is a, a thing, it's, it's new to Zim anyway. It's similar to um uh when we did oh, what the heck was it called when we go to the database and back then bind so we did bind just recently back in the last version of zim we did bind and that's a way that you can change properties without having to do much you just bind those properties and then when one changes the other one changes um, in the case of bind that's going off to the database and binding to the database in the case we consider just calling it bind and making it a local bind but we changed the name of it to wired or we, we decided to use the name wired instead and treat those even though they're similar we're treating them as two different uh, methods on on everything because they are a little bit different so we're wiring things up and that avoids events basically instead of saying hey on a change event on the slider change set the set the the you know some wah property to whatever the slider says we don't have to do that anymore we can just say uh um what is this one called again by not by <laughs> they're getting mixed up wire we can just say uh something like slider dot wire the tone uh, and what property and then we don't have to set up the 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 events it just does it in the background. Actually does it with the zim ticker. The ticker then monitors that and changes whenever one changes the other one changes. So that's really cool, and we'll see how that is being set up as we go into the code. And there's also vibrato with an amount and a rate and a shape. That's how, how much the frequency of the sound oscillates. Here's the tremolo, which is how much the gain, the volume of the sound oscillates, and you can set properties there. We haven't used either of those, except we use those in the synth pad. So in the synth pad, we had no wah, and we used vibrato and tremolo settings. And in the uh, in the synth example, the first one or the one that we're looking at today, it's just it's just a tone with only wah and not vibrato or tremolo. There are methods to stop and add notes, so you can add multiple notes to the same tone and remove, and you can animate things and wiggle. So aside from using sliders and and dials, you can actually use Zim Animate and Zim Wiggle to animate these effects as well, which is phenomenal. That's like really amazing. Imagine that you've got a, a ball and it zooms in, like it, it grows bigger, and then it does some sort of elastic thing. You can animate the exact same motion 
uh, you can animate the sound, the tone, to, to do that, to, to match the motion, which is really neat. I'm looking forward to experimenting on things like that. We were wiggling the dials and, and the sliders, but you don't have to. You could just wiggle the sound and get the same type of effects when we hit that uh, the randomizer. By the way, FFR stands for Frank Force Randomizer. We're dedicating that to Frank, who did that other play play aspect of the play part. All right, and we've got the wire, the no wire, um, and wired and no wired. So the way wire works is you're wiring two things together. You The wire is usually considered the source, and then the other one is the target. But if you want to put the method on the target, then you can use wired. And then wired is on the target, and the source is the, the parameter that's passed in. So it's just sort of flipping it, and, and it really doesn't matter which way you go. It's just convenience. Sometimes you want to set something once the two of them are made, and therefore, yeah, uh, anyway, whatever. We'll see that as we go into the code. And then there's web audio hooks as well. So you can go right in to different types of compressors and, and get some fuzz sounds and stuff like that from web audio. We've just done our wah, the vibrato, and the tremolo effects, but there, there could be more if you so desire. We had to make our own oscillator because it was like almost impossible if we could not figure out for a whole day we searched to find out how to oscillate a bloody offset frequency on, on the on the bandpass and could not figure it out. So we made our own oscillator in a couple hours. So it was it just started there. It's pretty uh, fun. And so there's an oscillator as well as some methods directly on the synth to to change things like the shapes and the notes and the waves or get get those values is kind of like a, a tool library for it. What would you call it anyway? Helper. Helper library. All right, good. Hey, doc's over. Yeah, sound good? Let's get into the code. Let's get into the code. All right, so to the code. We'll reduce this down. Here's the code. Finally, on our Zim Explore, the code. So we're bringing in ZimCat, the latest version, as of uh, June to 2020. Uh, and we're coming on down. There's our new synth. So we're going to use the tone from the synth. So that's setting the variable. Now we coded this all in Firefox initially locally, and you could play you can play a tone in Firefox without having to press on something without interacting. But it seems the world of the web has gone the way of mobile or whatever, you know, where you have to actually interact with something before you can play a sound. How lame. So that means anything with a backing sound, you've got to have a button that says, hey, let's start our app. And people click the button, they start the app, and the sound plays. Fine. So we developed it all, made this tone. So here's the tone, us making the tone. But then we had to throw it all into a start sound function. So how about we just take a quick look at the tone, I suppose, before we go in and see what started the sound. Here, here is the tone. It's a new synth.tone, and we're setting a volume and a note. Uh, that note is the high frequency oscillator. Okay, I was gonna, I'm so used to LFO. So this is the the frequency of the note, and we convert that in the in the background to hertz or whatever. Um, there's a shape, so we provided now new constants for the various waveform shapes, square being one, sine being another, and this uh, works better with wah. So, uh, wah works well with a square wave, it's, it's less noticeable with a, a sine wave. And then we've got the wah amount, the wah rate, this is the low frequency operator, uh, operator oscillator so this is wow wow at a low frequency uh, called lfo and then we're applying the throat and the note for that as well now note that we started off a little bit higher than the actual note of there it just sounded better and then this the wah shape is a sign which sounds nice that's a smooth wah wah rather than boo 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 boo, boo wah, 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 which would be a square wave and then oh we did t attach a little bit of vibrato so i was telling a slight that we've got a slight bit of vibrato amount on the note in general 
create. I'm gonna, I forgot that we had that there, but we're not adjusting that at all with the sliders, as far as I can remember. So it looks like we're styling various sliders. Okay, I think I think we're good for now. Before we get into the dials and all the parts, we're going to come back to that. Let's go find out how this sound got started. So we'll do a search on, we'll explore to find out. That's a search on my own computer. I just want to search in uh, Adam here, my editor, start sound. Hey, we found that, great. And another one, here it is right here. Okay, so where are we? We're on a start button. So this is that curvy cornered start button there. That's, that was made, it looks like a leaf was made by passing in an array to the corner. So that changes the different corners. We also had this rectangle foil, which is just a sort of a dark overlay so that it, it's sort of magical as you hit the button, everything lights up. And we're removing the foil and starting the button. Or removing the button. We're starting the sound, starting the wave. The wave is the uh, sort of uh, oscilloscope kind of thing, the scope that shows the waveform, the visualization. And that's done with Zim sound wave. So it was really quite easy to hook that up. Uh, we've been, we've got lots of animatings to sound. I think we even did a, a, a code in five minutes with some animation to sound at some point. So that's, that's in there. And then here is us discussing the wire and the wires, which are new to CAT. And there was a bubbling on those. So you're welcome to go to the bubbling and take a look where we went through the basics of wire and wired. Let's take a look at what we've done here. The tone, which has all these properties, such as the wah rate, the wah note. These are the properties that we're going to be affecting. These things right here are the names of the sliders. So those are all the references to the sliders, and this is a reference to the dial. We're basically saying make the tone be wired to the rate so that it changes this property. The rate is the slider, and that's going to change this property. And it's not going to be two-way, null. So it's not two-way, it's only one-way. But uh, the neat thing about this is, look, it's the tone that is wired to the rate. It's not the rate that is, uh, the, it's not rate dot wire, the tone. We could do that, but then we would have to say note dot wire the tone, amount dot wire the tone. Each of those would be a separate statement, uh, which would be handy if we made the sliders and stuff after we made the, the tone and we wanted to put the wire right on the slider once we made it. So we made the tone, we make a slider, and we wire it to the tone. Could do that. But what we decided to do was do all the wiring here at once at the end, and we were able to chain it to the tone. Look at that. Tone, dot wire, dot wire, dot wire, dot wire. <laughs> Isn't that nice? That basically is handling all of our events on the sliders and the dial. Right there, that little. Uh, and it's even cooler. This one right here, set source, we want the um, we want the rate slider to control the tone. And that happens naturally. If we put two-way, then it would go both ways. But we didn't put two-way. So we want the rate to control the tone. But what this one do does, and do what this one does is it sets the source. So uh, this is the source right here, and this is the target, the tone. So what we're doing is we're setting the source with from the target. So basically, whatever we set up for the tone, the sliders will all start at that setting. Isn't that cool? By this true. So we don't have to go in and say, uh, you know, make the slider, make the current value equal to the tone, or whatever the tone property is. It handles it right here like that, even though it's, it's not two-way, even though we don't usually get information from the tone to the slider, uh, by doing this it will start the slider off at the value of the tone. So that's quite handy. And this is all explained in here if you, <laughs> you need to read, read over that again. All right, there's also, we're also using a filter on this. So these ones don't have filters. Note here are the filters that are on the wire or, or the wired. And uh, we need to use a filter for the selector. 
So the selector is this part right here, where when we make a change of the selector, we get an index number. Well, we can't wire an index number directly to a thing that says saw or wave. That's what's needed. So the property is saw or wave, uh, no, sine or square or zap. But we're getting, we've got index numbers from, from the selector. And vice versa, when we first start off, we want it to start off on sine because this was set to be sine in the first place. That means if we change the tone to a square to start off, now remember that, that that's the tone of the, the low frequency oscillator is a square. So if we set that, or sorry, the uh, waveform of the low oscillator, if we set that to square up above, we want the selector to start off at square. So here's what we did for that. That's called the wash shape. So we've wired, this is still dotted to the tone. The tone is wired to waves. Waves is the selector. We're going to change the wash shape of the tone. But we've got a filter here. And what the filter does is it receives the input, which is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3 from the selector. So that's the input from the selector. We also receive a command because when you've got this as true, the, in, the data can either be going from the selector to the tone or from the tone to the selector. So when it's going the normal way, which is from the selector to the tone, that's a to command. When we're coming from, when we're going the opposite way, then it's the very first setting. So we're collecting a from here. So when the command is from, what we're going to do is we're going to return. So this is responsible. The, uh, the filter is responsible for returning the input. So we bring in the input, we make a change to it, and then we return the input. All right, as something else, like it's been filtered, it's been magnified, or it's been uh, maybe reduced or changed in some way, converted. And here, that's what we're, we're totally converting it because we're going to return the, the wave types. Uh, this is an array at whatever the input is. So let's see, the input is coming from the, uh, from the tone because this is from, so it's coming from the tone as a string. And we're checking the array as a string. So this would say, uh, which one was this? This one would say square. So this is going to say the string square. We're finding where that is in the waves array, the index. And then we're turning the input into an index number, which means the selector will receive that as an input as an index number. Isn't that amazing? And otherwise, if it's not from, then it's the other way around. It's going to. That's the normal way. And what we're doing is we're changing an index number of the selector. We're taking that index number right here. This would be the input and we're returning the wave type at that, a string. So we filtered out, turned an index number into a string and returned it. So every time we change that selector, it's being received as an index, but it's wired out as a string to the, um, to the wave or to the tone. Isn't that amazing? I just love it. So you can read about that here in, in the wiring of the filter. This is uh, the random slider stuff that's all going. There we are, just wiggling. We're looping through our sliders. There's the slider names. We're looping through them, and we're wiggling their current value by various amounts. <laughs> and, and off it goes. Isn't that brilliant? It's so much fun. Uh, what's this toggle on a change? A pause, animate. Oh, that's just turning it off or on. So that pauses the wiggle or not pauses the wiggle. Something like that. Oh, what this is doing, it looks like, is uh, turning off the sliders because as it's as it's randomizing, we don't want people to go in and start trying to change the slider because that would be fighting against the wiggle. So we've turned the enabled to to off for each of the sliders. All right, very cool. Uh, let's go up and see these sliders and dials. Then that's the part that we're missing here in this explore. So here's the sound wave. Oh, we haven't seen the sound wave either. So that's a, uh, we don't really need to look at the sound wave. You can come in and take a look at that. Basically, we're animating to the sound there in a ticker. 
So we're using the sound wave, we're calculating it, we're animating the bars based on the, the data that we're getting. And so we're looping through the bars that we made and setting the data of each of those to whatever the, the data, the frequency is. So all of this stuff right here is making a sound wave. When that sound wave is ready, we make a bars container. We're uh, looping through however many number, however many waves we've asked for. We've asked for 50, looks like, I guess. And then we uh, are animating those. So those are little bars that are going up and down in there. Pretty cool, huh? There are various labels that we're positioning, and we've applied styles to those to look like that. And then we use place, by the way. We didn't just, we didn't eyeball all of these numbers. We had a dot place on the end of these. We just picked them up, put them in a place, and then copied the number from the console to here. And there's this, okay, so there's the tone. Where, where are these? Here are the styles that we've got for the, um, for the sliders and the dials. And this is of type slider right somewhere. There should be that we're, the sound right there. there is. So anything that has a sound parameter is going to be turned on to true. So that, that handles both the dials and the sliders there. I think the only ones with that, and it's just to match. There's a certain look to dials and sliders in the sound, in the audio world. And we realized that the Zim default slider and dial didn't really look quite as funky enough to, to match that. So in Zim Cat, we revamped all of that stuff and accent, that's it, with an accent color. And that's the, the, you know, the glow and the rings and you know, all that kind of stuff. So there we are handling the style for the sliders and the dials for that. Here's our first dial right here. Our only dial, I think, is just the volume dial on this. So there's our volume dial. We also changed the ticks in the semi. So we now have semi ticks, which is very nice. So that's new. Um, where are the semi ticks on the dial? That's funny. I don't even see any semi ticks on the dial. But the, here are semi ticks on the sliders. Right here. Tuka, tuka, tuka. So the dial must be, which dial is this? You're looking at the right thing. Semi ticks. Not sure. It is the volume. And I'm not seeing ticks. We'll have to look into that. Maybe we're missing the, uh, maybe something happened to them. Do you see them? I don't see them there. No ticks. I wonder if the style has got them the same color as the background or something. Anyway, that's what they they potentially are supposed to look like. We'll have to look into that. Um, here is the first slider called Throat. And we're also setting ticks and semi-ticks for that. As well as uh, there's the amount, and rate, and note. Okay, so those look pretty easy. Those are just slider, slider, slider. What is going on with the throat? The throat is it the vertical false. So this is the horizontal one. Looks like there's some trickery going with the, the tick steps that aren't needed for these. And I don't know exactly why. Oh, I think I remember why. If you, with the throat, if you go to a, a full zero or something like that, it, um, it uh, like feedbacks, it goes like <coughs> and blows up your sound or something. So we may have had to, throttle the throat <laughs> a little bit uh fine and yet still keep the ticks looking like we're not throttling i think that was uh, our little maneuver there to not go to the very bottom okay great all these have min and max parameters so why does it say that min and max that's probably min and max min and max that's it for the sliders so we're setting certain min and maxes that work well with the sound and if we wanted to right here, we could locate it and we could have dot wire to the tone. And then we would say what property we wanted to, this is the wah amount, okay, so wah amount like so. And that might be all we need to say, it depends on what exactly we're doing. Uh, if we wanted to set the start value to whatever the tone start value is, we'd have to go null true. But most of the time when you're wiring, it might just look like that. That's it. 
And so no more events. Not that the events are all that hard to tell you the truth. It would just be a dot change. And then you would say something like tone dot wa amount is equal to uh, amount dot current value, uh, basically. So it's just, you know, a quick event on the end of here, but still it's nice to wire it. And there's a few extra features of wire that that you can do as well and even even the filter that we showed before you could just put the filter whatever in in the event so that is still the same amount of code setting the default value like in reverse or wired in reverse is handy because again to, to wire this in reverse is just true like that and then both of them will affect one another so you can take a look at the deep the basic wire deep wire example demo example in the zimcat area all right, if you're wanting more about how wiring both ways work. But like I said, we decided to take all the wires and stick them down below. But take a look. Here's the dials. Cool, huh? Here's the toggle. That was for what? That's for the um, Frank Force randomizer. There's all the labels. Here's the scope itself is a container that has a rectangle and a circle. That's all for the wave stuff. Very cool. That's a synthesizer, and I think, as far as I can tell here, we've uh, we've gone through everything. That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? That's a synthesizer. It's beautiful. And this compares to I don't know. Do you want to take a Do you want to take a quick explore to the docks? Yeah, let's explore the docks. Da, da, da. We've already looked at the docks, but I'm going to go right into the CDN here, which is right here, and into Cat. Clitink and cat zero will be rolling out cat one at some point and so forth. So here is the, the docs. Oh, I hate that. Look at that. It just opened up three things. I think I can just click this, but I used to think I'd have to close each of these panels. This is Adam. I mean, I was aiming for that and I hit that blue dot. <laughs> I still do have to turn off all these panels. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, give me the, um, what was I just, I just wanted to reduce that. Okay. Uh, here's a thanks to Frank Force right up at the top of the docs. By the way, the, the docs, the top of the docs was rewritten uh, in the Explorer. As to reasonings be, be behind ES6, ES5 modules in Zim. So if you ever wondered about, ES, like we know how to do ES6 modules, and we use, we could use ES6 modules if we wanted to when you work with Zim. So you're welcome to use your own ES6 modules. But Zim will not be moving to ES6 modules unless they change. We don't like the fact that ES6 modules force you to either use a namespace or import every single bloody command that you use. And there's no way that we're having you people using Zim. I'm glad you're there using Zim. Uh, importing each each command you use. That's that's ridiculous. And we don't want you to have to use a namespace. You don't have to. Zim is a framework. There's no real reason for you to use the namespace on everything. Uh, it's very rare that you use Zim with other things. And it goes on to talk about that fact as well. If you are thinking that you really need to use React and Angular and Vue, you don't. You can leave that alone. We have absolutely no use in Zim for that kind of stuff. Uh, we're a front-end canvas framework for coding creativity. We're not some, uh, I don't know, uh, information site builder with component stuff. For, you know, we're, we're different. So if you're coming from React, Angular, and Vue, try and leave it behind. Uh, you can easily put Zim into that if you, so, if you really, really have to. But... Uh, Often there's no reason to. So some musings on that anyway. <laughs> this explore. But we were wanting to find, we'll have to do a search here. We were wanting to find the synth. So synth is equal to, and here it is here. So this is a Zim synth. By the way, in the docs version, all the docs are in there. If I just go find again, or and again, and again, and again, there we are. We're at the start of the synth code. So here's the Frank Force code that has been wrapped. Uh, look at those parameters. He prides himself on the very smallest of libraries. So uh, it's something like, I can't remember, 12K or something like that to do all of his, maybe, maybe it could be even less. 
So here is that stuff happening. It was a bit of a pain to have to work with it because I had to figure out what you know, each letter meant. Um, but uh, we did that, and now here's the tone playing. So this is all of the Zim stuff that added in the tone where we're bringing in the web audio context here. And by the way, what all this zik means right here is that's that's short form for zim pick. Uh, that's the you know like we have uh, zog and zum and zid and we've got zik stands for pick. So it means that all of these things are zim v values, which means we can pass in. Uh, functions that return a value. We can pass in ranges with a range object. We can pass in an array to randomly pick from. And um, uh, we can pass in a series so that if I made a series, if I made a bunch of notes, for instance, I can just pass in a series and it would apply the, the notes going up in series, that, that type of thing. So that's all set up for Zim B. Here's an oscillator that is the uh, create oscillator, and all sorts of crap happens down in here. You can't can't even seem to. What we were finding is you can't directly change volumes. You have to. Oh, I don't know. You have to ramp everything, and uh, there was just all these little quirks to the the web audio that was just torturous Ugh, to work with. But anyway. In the end, we did get it to work. It just it took a lot of work to get it to work. And here is that lot of work of ramping various gains. And it's fine, I guess you want to know to be able to do that. <laughs> what do you think? What an exploration. So there's us making the war, setting all of the wa things. There's Q value. Wow. Fascinating. I liked working with the Q value. It was very Star Trek. <laughs> Somebody is going to appear at some point. We could not get RAM to work. So hard coding this into you know, I was like, raw, 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 raw. In the end, down below here, after the getter setter methods. There's, we're still in the wah. Okay, so now we're into the tremolo. Here we're into the vibrato. And here is uh, the tone being called initially. So that calls it factory or whatever that's called. There's our oscillator. So this is the Zim oscillator going in here. Some uh, beginning stuff to set the various oscillator formulae. The formulae for the oscillator. So this is changing the amounts based on these mathematical formulae. <laughs> Formulas. Pausing and disposing. And that's it. And that's, uh, again, a factory thing where we're, there we are exposing the oscillator to the outside world. All right. Very nice. I think this has been fine for a, a Zim Explorer, wouldn't you say? Um, I am Dr. Abstract. And have a great day or night. I, uh, it was really fun to take you through building the synth. That's just one note. Obviously, you want to attach a keyboard and uh, start making things happen. I, I would suggest taking like a combination of the two of them would be amazing. A combination between the uh, synth pad and the synth. Uh, sounds good, huh? All right. You guys have a great day or night. Cheers. Uh, Come on into zimjs.com slash slack and, and join us. Bye-bye.